In the previous section, we introduced what linear vector spaces are, the basic definitions of linear vector spaces. In this section, we're going to define some measures of the vectors in linear vector spaces. In particular, we want to define the sizes of the vectors, we want to define the distance between vectors, and we want to define uh, the angle between vectors. The first measure of vectors that we're going to define is the size or the norm of a vector. The norm has to satisfy three important properties. The first property is if I have a vector x and then I multiply this vector by a number alpha, then the length of alpha x divided by the length of x has to equal to the absolute value of this alpha. The second property is that the size of vectors has to satisfy the triangle inequality. If I have a vector u and a vector v, then the size or the length of u plus v has to be greater, it has to be less than or equal to the length of u plus the length of v. And the third property is that I want this size or the norm or the size of a vector to be equal to zero if and only if the vector is the zero vector. So a norm function has to satisfy the following property. If I have a v as a linear vector space over R, and if I have a norm function, the norm function is defined over v, it takes vectors and gives me positive real numbers or zero. And this function has to satisfy the following properties. The length of the vector v after I multiply the vector v by alpha has to be equal to the length of v after I multiply it by the absolute value of alpha. The, the norm function has to satisfy the triangular inequality as we talked about in the previous slide. And it has to satisfy the positive definiteness which states that the norm of a vector is equal to zero if and only if this vector is equal to zero. In our spaces, we are going to utilize the Euclidean norm. If I have a vector x in an n-dimensional vector space, x has n components, and the Euclidean norm is defined as the function that takes the size of x. It is the square root of the sum of each of these square components. And if you check, this function satisfies the three properties defined in the previous slide. The second measure that I want in my linear vector spaces is a distance or a metric between vectors. And this uh, distance between vectors has to satisfy also three uh, properties that we're going to be talking about in the next slide. But in particular, one of the most important properties is that the distance between vectors is equal to zero if and only if those two vectors are exactly the same vector. So the distance or the metric function between uh, it defined on vector spaces is as follows. If I have V is a linear vector space, a metric is a function designated as rho now. It takes two vectors and gives me a positive or zero, a positive real number or, or zero, and it has to satisfy the following properties. The distance between X and Y is equal to the distance between Y and X. It also has to satisfy this triangular inequality the distance between x and z has to be less than or equal to the distance between x and y and the distance between y and z. And it also has to identify vectors that are exactly the same. x is equal to y if and only if the distance between them is equal to zero. For any of our spaces, r power 1, r power 2, r power 3, or r power n, if I have for every vector x and y with this representation, the distance or the Euclidean distance between those two vectors is, this, is defined as the norm of x minus y. And as you can see, this function will satisfy the three properties that we talked about in the previous slide. The last measure that we want to put in our uh, vector spaces is the Euclidean dot product. The dot product gives me a measure of whether these uh, vectors are kind of in the same direction or not. The dot product is defined as x dot y is equal to the first component of x multiplied by the first component of y plus the second multiplied by the second and so on plus x and multiplied by y n. And notice that the dot product between x dot x 
just by definition is equal to the norm of x squared because x dot x will be equal to x1 x1 plus x2 x2 and so on and norm x squared as we defined it in the previous slides is equal to the x1 squared plus x2 squared and so on in particular when x and y are in three-dimensional vector spaces then x dot y is equal to x1 y1 x2 y2 x3 y3 there's another formula that is also used for the dot product. x dot y is equal to norm x, norm y, multiplied by cosine theta xy, which is the angle between x and y. Now, notice that the difference between those two formulas. The first formula has no angles. But the second formula states that x dot y is equal to the square root of x1 squared plus x2 squared plus x3 squared multiplied by the square root of y1 squared plus y2 squared plus y3 squared multiplied by cosine theta the angle between x and y starting from either this definition or this definition you should be able to reach one from the other now this is how we defined the dot product and in other texts you'll find that this is how the dot product is defined they're both equivalent and you should find the proof you should look on the internet for a proof that shows that this definition is also equivalent to this definition. We say that two vectors are perpendicular or orthogonal if x dot y gives me zero.